it all comes down to this the reason why the players train the reason why they make the kind of money they make the reason why they play basketball the reason why they want to get to the nba yeah welcome to the puts back show and this is an ultimate edition because we are finally here at the nba finals my name is slimo i'm here with teddy to in fact just admire what is right in front of us to look into the future and to what is possibly going to happen in the NBA Finals as the Boston Celtics will be looking to hang Banner 18 and become the most storied franchise in the NBA. Or will the Dallas Mavericks get their second ring and Luka Doncic become a first-time NBA champion? And welcome to this episode. For the NBA Finals, kindly smash the like button. We'll be dropping back-to-back -back content for you guys. There's a lot coming on this channel. Make sure you are subscribed. Make sure you turn post notification on. I'm telling you, you do not want to miss this one. It is going to be action-packed. Now, the NBA Finals, going into it, there are so many storylines and narratives that just make it so interesting so to many, watch. So and many. we could begin from anywhere and it will still catch fire. I mean, you look at the first instance, the two players who played on opposite teams. We saw Kyrie Irving on the Boston Celtics. We've seen Paul Zingis on the Dallas Mavericks. Now, the most controversial is, of course, Kyrie on the Boston sure. Celtics. Him joining them from the Cleveland Cavaliers. He was supposed to become the face of the franchise, kind of nurture Jason Tatum and then Jalen Brown to, be, to, to, to kind of nurture them into the stars that they the, are now and made, make them a contender. But it all went south. So I'll leave it to you being a Boston <laughs> Celtics fan. <laughs> Teddy, can you give us an, a little insight into how that one went down and then we'll move from there and then go to Porzingis' story. So it's, uh, it's, so, it's, it's annoying for Kyrie fans and for Celtics fans. It's like, it's a no-no. Because you told us he was going to extend, mm. and then he did extend, fine. But then the process of him leaving was the problem. And then he came back when he, when he moved to Brooklyn, and he stepped on um, Lucky. Lucky. <laughs> and that was what aggravated the, the, um, the, the fans. Issue. And I, I feel like the, the, it's, 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 warranted, it's, a bit. it's warranted a bit. Because we, we, we didn't force you. You said you were going to extend, and then you lied to us. And then you went to next, came back. Um, with sage sage on the court <laughs> and then you stepped on like he was you did it and and, and the, the fans it's warranted so i feel like it's the fans have have, have something mm. if if maybe there was there was nothing wrong he did nothing wrong then the fans um, won't have anything to stand on to say oh you did this you did this but then he did something so uh, boston fans are it's going to be an iso mm, it's going to mm. be an iso and i know games one and game two being boston that should be electrifying very, very i mean electrifying. Kyrie Irving since stepping on lucky his own 10 yeah at the td garden yeah. since leaving um, um the boston celtics he hasn't had a good record at the td garden but in these players on the road Kyrie Irving has played extremely well so it's kind of a mixed bag we can't predict where to go but it's Kyrie Irving. he's an extremely good player and the boston celtics definitely have a lot on their hands now let's move to the other side of, of the coin christoph Porzingis traded to uh the new york knicks the knicks didn't work out for him and then dallas the dallas mavericks acquired him to become that potential second star to look at Doncic. and the duo looked like it would be amazing from the start because at the time before before uh Porzingis, there was only one unicorn we were mentioning of kevin durant, kevin durant. when Porzingis came they kind of gave that unicorn name to him but he didn't live up to the hype because of injuries i don't think Porzingis the play plays, style exactly because for Luka Doncic, you've got to play as a big. But he was playing more or less like a forward, wanted to, to be a shooter corner. a lot more. I watched him a lot of times because we played against them. Porzingis, I did watch him a lot of times because when he was playing against the Clippers, he didn't really be that guy that we're expecting him to be. And sometimes that can happen. And him playing against the Dallas Mavericks, he could add added edge. Hopefully, he'll also, be, he'll also be on the court and then it will be interesting. Now, mm. Luka Doncic, he's possibly one of the most difficult players to guard in the league. Sure. And when you're looking at how defenses have fared against Luka in these players, it has been miserable. I would confidently say that even the Clippers did a better job of guarding him than what the OKC and then the Timberwolves did because he kind of struggled against us. But in the rest, he has been able to elevate his game. Maybe he was injured against us, but um, in the rest, he has played very, very well. What do you see the Boston Celtics approach guarding Luka in the series will be like? So, um, first of all, let's look at the Timberwolves um, series. You see, 
anytime um, Luca gets the ball, they trap or they blitz because they want to get the ball out of his hand. And then once they do that, he gives the ball to Derek Lively. Derek Lively is one of the best passing bigs in 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 this series or in, in this playoffs. playoffs. And then he gives it off. He gives a, 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 a better pass. It's 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 either a three or a two, and it went on for the whole series and. There was nothing they could do because once the ball is in Lively's hand, he's not driving to the rim, but he's, he's looking for an, 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 an open look man mm-hmm. or someone who's open to knock down the shots. And when you look at Celtic's uh, style of play, we don't trap. Mm-hmm. We don't blitz. We're always in the drop. Mm-hmm. So you have a Hofford or Porzingis always in the drop. The advantage of being in the drop is you don't give away corner threes. Mm-hmm. But fine. There's one thing look at us when you when you stay in the drop that is the high pick and roll then Derek Lively rolls or Gafford rolls then he gets the player at his back puts you in jail then he probes 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 so it's either your big is coming to him to for help to help on on defense then there's the lob threats or once you just uh, your big goes to um to defend the lob mm, threat, that's what that's, then he just goes for the layup or he goes for an easy pull up. So it's it's a lose lose for you Pick when your big comes lob threat. When he doesn't come, easy two, or he draws the foul and gets a two. Draws the foul, doesn't get the two, or and gets to the line. It's it's a lose lose situation. But I feel like with the body Celtics have to be able to put on him, that is during the regular season it was Jalen Brown. Now it could be. It could be Drew Holiday. I don't think um, Derek White can do that. Can take that assignment because of size. He cannot, but he can try. But so these are the two players I feel can do the work. But you can't necessarily stop Luca, but you can reduce efficiency. So that's what we are looking for. That's what we are looking for. Get the ball out of his hand. We want him to be shooting. If he is going and the other teammates are not going, we are fine with it. But but this is the case where I've seen a lot of the defensive coverage that with you and Luca is possibly get the ball out of Lucas' hands. And in the previous years, it was working. But this time around, if you get the ball out of Lucas' hands and they manage to get it into Kyrie, you're in trouble. Yes. So, but I think the Celtics might be the best team equipped to deal with this style because they've got multiple bodies to throw at him. Yeah. Like you said, they don't even mind maybe a Jason Tatum being in foul trouble because he was guarding Luca too heavily because on the offensive end, we won't need Jason Tatum at the highest level. We can still rely on the likes of Dylan Brown, true. Derek White, true. Drew Holiday. It, hell, even uh, uh, the guy who comes from the bench, Peyton Pe- Pritchard, Pe- 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 produce. Yeah. So I think the Celtics defense have what it takes to be able to handle. But when Luca goes God mode, you feel like it might just be too much. And... One good thing about this thing is basketball, it, it, it now takes seven people to win um, a championship or mm. to win a game in a series. Let's look at Pacers. Pacers had had five starting uh, starting uh, uh, starting lineup and then they had TJ McConnell, they had um, Topping, they had Shepard. When you look at these playoffs, their bench carried them for most parts in this, in this playoffs when they were down big. When they were down big, so when they were down, they bring the, um, the bench players and then they help them to close the gap. So, and when you take their bench players out of it, their of, uh, offensive rating reduces mm-hmm. drastically. So you need seven players, totally seven players, whether spe- uh, specialists, you need seven good players to win a series. So now they have Dante, they have Kyrie. We can get them to go. We mm-hmm. can leave them to go off. The highest they can go is 65, 70 points. Now, if we are able to hold off and get their other teammates to be cold, we are done. The thing is, immediately you are getting them to go off. That is where the notion comes from the Celtics defenders is, hey, he's going off too much. We have to be able to double team him. And while you double team him, that's where P.J. Washington, all of a sudden, the fourth quarter, turns into Mr. Raining every single three. So that is how the X's and O's work on the defensive end. But enough about talking about how Luka can be great. The Boston Celtics offense and the biggest X factor being Kristaps Porzingis and his availability. The word out there is he will be available yeah, for the final, and it makes a whole lot of a difference. Lot of it, it, it just elevates the Boston Celtics to a different level. We've seen him in and out of that lineup, even out of the lineup. Our offer has done an incredible job, very, but very, very. you just can't compare that magnitude of how good Christos Porzingis is because once he's in there, it's going to cause problems for the Lively and Daniel Gafford. But 
once Porzingis comes in, I feel like it just changes the whole dimension of the offense. But we've got to look at the wings because the Boston Celtics, their best players are still there too with Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum. We've seen P.J. Washington and Derek Lively deal with wings in the playoffs. They've dealt with the likes of Carl Anthony Towns. Edwards. They've dealt with Carl Anthony Towns. they dealt with Paul George very, very, very well, very, actually. Very well. But this is the case where I'm expecting Jalen Brown to be as physical as he can be. Hmm. Because one thing that shocked me the most with the Dallas Mavericks is rim protection. I didn't expect their rim protection to be this elite. They have been one of the best rim protectors in the playoffs so far. And one guy who likes to get to the paint is Jalen Brown. Brown. Sure. If Jason Tatum can do that, fine. But I know Jason Tatum is a better jump shooter and we can rely on his jump shot. For Jalen Brown, if he gets it going, fine. But I need him to be as extremely aggressive as possible to put pressure on Lively and Gafford. There was this thing um, Jason, Jason Kidd was doing uh, against, I think, Anthony Edwards. So, during the Sun series, he... He, they don't they don't send help whilst he's driving they send help early if i should say so once you sell you send help early he sees the gaps and he knows what to do he knows what to do early mm -hmm. but then antonio Dots drives against mouths before he, he 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 turns the corner gets past one defender they put another defender right in front of him is it that he's 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 foul he's drawing the foul he's drawing the foul or he's overturning the ball that, that was it so it's they send help late so he doesn't see the help once he's driving because he's not those type of he's not like she who is able to decelerate and accelerate he's he's, he's the, going he's, he's, going. he's going so once he's going and you put the body um in front of him late because he doesn't have that change in peace he he just he fouls or he, he turns the ball over so that is one thing I, I'm sure Jason Kidd is going to do with Jalen Brown because he also has that same style of getting to the rim so with the improvement of Jalen Brown this season, I'm sure and I know, maybe after one or two attempts, when the when he fails getting to the rim, he will learn from it and then maybe mm -hmm. we can do something. And about it. and look at Doncic, the whole of the playoffs is spoken about how bad he can be on defense, but I've really been impressed with him. But I think like this, I think this is the series where I struggle the most because usually on the other, the rest of the other series, they hide him against the short creators. True. We never saw Luka Doncic one on one against Anthony Edwards. We never saw him one on one against um, um, Carl Anthony Towns. No. We never saw him one on one against Paul George, James Harden, just a couple of times, or even Shea Gilgeous Alexander. This time around, every Celtic starter is a short creator on his own. Drew Holiday can get buckets against Doncic. So can Derek White, so can Christoph Porzingis, and of course, Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum, who definitely cook him. And this is where hiding. Look at Doncic can be very difficult. Very, very so difficult. I don't know how the Mavs and Jason Kidd are going to handle that portion of it. But this series is just going to be remarkable. Do you have the series going to at least six games? I I, I even have it going to seven games. Mm. Honestly. A seven game series a in seven the final game series. Because we have be crazy. two of the best closers mm. in the in the NBA mm. now. And then we have the, the best the, team. The most clutch team. The most clutch team in the NBA. So I can't say. I can't say any team in four, any mm. team in five. It's going to six or seven. Mm. See, and, and I want it to go to six or seven. You can't give me four games. No. Mm. You're ready, you're ready I'm, for the, I'm for ready. the emotional and mental I've stress. Heard, I've already bought <laughs> blood and, and drips. I'm mm. ready, because I'm ready this for season, whatever. No Celtics fan has ever faced stress. I'm ready you, for you, whatever. You, you, you killed Miami in five games. <laughs> you did so to the Cleveland Cavaliers. Again to the Indiana Pacers. So this is the first time look at the team i actually stress you guys so please get your pressure monitor and everything <laughs> beside you guys because this nba final Shocking. will be hectic let's finish it off with the legacy of the two players on the line sure jason tatum jalen brown jalen brown luka Doncic, Kyrie Kyrie Irving. Irving. winning a championship means that we might dead a lot of talks for jason sure. tatum winning a championship means that we might dead a lot of talks for oh, for luka Doncic as well they might as well even put him the best player of the league conversation Going into these finals, who do you think it will benefit more to win the championship? It's going to benefit more of Celtics. Mm. That is Jalen Brown and Tatum. Because I feel like they are being more critiqued because they have always been in, they the, have always been in the playoffs. Jalen Brown uh, um, drafted in 2016, Jason Tatum 2017. 2017, they went to the Eastern Conference mm. finals. Mm. Every Bradley and then um, IT. Mm. Then 18, they mm. went. Mm. 2020, they went. 2022, they Even went. Even at the time, I think we came out. 2022, they went. Mm. 2024, 
they are yeah, going they again. Been. So they've they've been they've they've, they've, they've always been they've in always that been mix. in that mix. And they are, and they, they they are not players who are always on the bench during regular season. They are always playing. So you always see them. So it feels like it's like they've always been around. Mm. That's how people. But they are young. So so it's and they have to win it because they've always knocked at the door and their GMs have already have always made the right decisions for them. You cannot get it any better than this. Mm. You cannot get it any better than this team. This is one of the best, one of the most complete teams in NBA. You have two of the best the defensive backcourts in the NBA. Mm. What what else do you need? Mm. You have mm. Porzingis, you have Jalen Brown, mm. who who is arguably this is like his 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 best basketball he's ever played in his mm. life. You have um Jason Terum who now ha- has matured has so matured much. so much where he doesn't fall short. Mm. Even in even in if even he can have zero points in first, second, third quarters, fourth quarter, you, you blink your eye, he has 30 points. Mm-hmm. He has 30 points. This is the kind of team you have now. Mm. And it is it it's it's it to be a knock on them because now financial burdens mm. are going to knock mm. on the door mm. once because of the because of the big money you once you don't win it. To, to Jalen Brown. So before we end it all, prediction. Celtics in how many games? Celtics. I'm a Celtics fan, so obviously I'm going to go for Celtics. Mm. Celtics mm. in seven mm. or Celtics in six. <laughs> hmm. the, this was this, the, this was the same thing mm. I was echoing in 2022. Mm. Warriors, <laughs> Warriors, Warriors. Ha! Uh, it feels like we are in 2022 happen. again. But uh, I'll, I'll just put this little prediction in in the first two games. If the Dallas Mavericks don't get at least one game. I think the Celtics win it. But I'm just looking forward to those first two games and how they will go at the TD Garden. But that's how we'll close this one out for today. Remember to subscribe to the channel because every <laughs> single game, we'll be bringing you guys the analysis in depth on how the games will go and how we think the next games will also be going. It's the NBA Finals time. It's the best time to be a fan of basketball. It's the best time to be a subscriber of the Putsback Show. My name is Slamo. I did this with Teddy and we are out for now. We'll see you next time.